two. We have a live broadcast today. So we're timing it to be at 10 o'clock. Thank you all for joining us today. In a world that's gone digital, Hawaii's been slow in adopting technology. Hawaii is missing out on these best practices to make our state stronger and more resilient. True's purpose is simple, to accelerate Hawaii's adoption of technology. True creates a test and learn environment of widely used cloud-based technologies and best practices that drive efficiencies and profitability for public and private sector organizations. True Initiative is about the tech enablement and collaboration. So having more people involved in True makes True stronger. I think we all can learn from each other. It, everybody has something to learn. And if you don't have something to learn, you probably have something to teach. So if we work together, we'll, we'll definitely be stronger as a community. Adoption of technology is important because tech-enabled organizations and tech-enabled workforce lead to a stronger economy higher wages, and higher quality of life for residents. And that's exactly what True is about. When True first came to us, it was all about the sandbox. You know, the sandbox is the front door for innovation. A lot of the best ideas, you know, come from outside of the sandbox. And so we built this place and it was, it was a catalyst. The Hawaii Executive Collaborative had just come to light and they approached us and asked us, hey, can we start a new initiative here? and immediately we jumped in. It, it, did, it did a lot of things that we were hoping to do, trying to do for a long time, which again is about elevating the priority for innovation here in Hawaii. Get involved in True. You can learn things quickly and efficiently, or you can offer your expertise for the future of Hawaii. There are two ways True makes this happen. First, we showcase solutions to common organizational challenges. Often, these challenges aren't new. Someone's already solved them. We share these solutions so you don't have to recreate the wheel. Second, we foster connections. From hosting collaborative events to connecting you with organizations that have leveraged technology solutions, your digital journey shouldn't be one that's navigated alone. On the heels of COVID with everything shut down, digital is the bridge for the economy. We talk about airports and we talk about harbors, you know. The digital bridge is really what's going to connect us to the rest of the world and allow our businesses to be successful and thrive here. By the way, they also create the good jobs that we need. It doesn't matter where you are in your digital journey. We're all working toward the same thing, a healthy digital economy. And technology has the power to get us there. Visit our website and contact True to let us know how we can help accelerate your adoption of technology. So a lot of people in my advisory board <laughs> have been driving change in Hawaii longer than I have. <laughs> so I'm really appreciative um, that they stepped forward to do this. Today's event will highlight the urgency to leverage these technology and cloud solutions for our businesses, communities, and state to become more efficient and productive. You'll see resources available to support our local organizations in doing so, and how every one of us can get involved to ensure that Hawaii's future is headed in a direction that benefits us all. I'll be introducing our key speakers in a little while, but I'd like to welcome Mayor Blangiardi, the city of Honolulu, and Mayor Roth, County of Hawaii, for joining us today. I'd also like to welcome leaders of other nonprofits who support Hawaii's change and growth. Uh, Dwayne Carisu, Chair of Hawaii Executive Collaborative, Michelle Saito, Chair of Hawaii Business Roundtable. Sherry Menar McNamara, President and CEO of Chamber of Commerce. Christine Sakuda, Executive Director of Transform Hawaii Government. 
Welcome to these and many distinguished guests that we have here today. Thank you for joining us. I think the bottom line is that productivity and efficiencies can significantly increase the techno can be significantly increased with technology and data. And we need to embrace this opportunity in order to remain relevant. The commitment to do so may seem daunting when we have competing priorities. But today, you'll hear why it's critical to do so now. And for those of you who are saying, Michelle, you're preaching to the choir, I'm already on it, um, there's a role for all of us. We can help other organizations be more competitive and sustainable, strengthening Hawaii as a whole and helping local organizations to succeed. With this, we have the opportunity to upskill and empower local talent to embrace this change, make a better living, and move forward together. This all points us to strengthening our digital economy. Today, we have a short and impactful program. To start with the event, I'd like to welcome Governor Ige. He's focused on improving the lives of Hawaii's people and making the islands a place future generations can call home. Digital economy is one way to get us closer to that goal. Governor Ige. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for all of you being here. Uh, you know, before I get into my formal um, remarks, I really just wanted to uh, thank uh, Paul Yonomini and, and Eddie, Peter Dames, and really everybody uh, involved here at the Sandbox. You know, when we had the groundbreaking uh, and then the grand opening, uh, you know, I heard the murmurs about whether this was going to be w another one of those failed state efforts. and. I really wanted uh, to thank each and every one of you, Christine, Michelle, uh, Paul, because you guys really believed in the vision of this facility uh, and made it happen uh, in a real way every single day showing up uh, to be successful. So I really wanted to express that appreciation, Paul. I know you guys, I don't have enough time to talk with you guys really in, in a lot of different ways. Uh, and I could not let this uh, occasion uh, go by without expressing that. I mean, this uh, sandbox has exceeded all expectations, I think, and it really is because of the collaboration of uh, all in the private sector and public sector uh, to really make this happen. Uh, I think we've all seen uh, what COVID has done uh, to our state, our country, and the world. Uh, it has super accelerated uh, the advancement to the digital economy uh, because every single organization on the planet had to embrace it or perish. I mean, that was, that was the fact of life. Uh, when we uh, issued the stay-at-home order uh, and we asked people to not interact, not do what we normally do as, as a community, uh, it forced all of us to really rethink what we did on a daily basis. Um, we have seen such a tremendous acceleration and shift uh, in the many cases, uh, individuals and businesses struggled at the beginning, not really understanding whether this is really a uh, transformation or it's a detour, right? I mean, I think many of us, and Christine, we've been at this digital stuff for much longer than we would want to admit publicly, uh, but so many fits and starts about trying to make the digital economy happen uh, in the islands, and it took a pandemic. Uh, to really uh, accelerate the transformation uh, much faster than any of us ever thought was possible, right? Uh, that's why in my state of the state, I really focused on the vision of Hawaii 2.0 and about what we really need to do as a community uh, to ensure uh, that Hawaii can be a place for our children uh, to call home, you know, to have the option to see the career opportunities, uh, to see a future here with affordable housing, quality jobs, uh, being able to pursue their professional dreams uh, in a way that all of us want for our children. You know, I still have three kids working on the mainland, um, and I work uh, every single day. Uh, and really, this digital, this drive for digital uh, economy is the solution that all of us need to fully embrace uh, and work toward because it uh, definitely will make a difference. 
uh, Hawaii 2.0 is really about the pivot to digital and recognizing, and we all did it, right? I mean, every single one of our organizations uh, looked at the pandemic and made the transformations necessary so that we could keep our em uh, employees safe, um, committed to the changes that was necessary to keep our community healthy and safe, uh, transform what we did, minimize social interaction, and embrace digital technology unlike any other period that I've ever seen in the state of Hawaii. And because we did it, I know that we can do it again. And more importantly, uh, we need to accelerate the, the pace of adoption because we've seen over and over and again, if you're not in the digital economy, then you're really not in the economy. You know, there's no, there's no discussion about whether there's an option not to do it. We want every Hawaii resident to have access to be connected, digitally literate, uh, and have the opportunities and use these skills to help every single organization and business here in the state of Hawaii. This transformation has proved that any job can occur anywhere on the planet, uh, delivering services to anywhere on the planet, and developing products and services uh, anywhere that we would want to, where we dare to dream about doing that. We want to be nimble and competitive. We want our businesses here in Hawaii to thrive because we know what it takes. And I think most importantly, we're committed to helping each other and helping every organization be successful in this new digital economy. That really does involve leveraging business expertise that, uh, that requires uh, b government to embrace technology. You know, I'm proud of uh, the state's response to COVID. It wasn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but we embrace um, digital solutions uh, much faster than we've ever seen uh, here in the state of Hawaii. Uh, and we do know it's about building the education and upskilling technology to help those who don't have the skills uh, because they will need them in, in the Hawaii of the future. Uh, and it really is about uh, working together to accelerate the transformation. Uh, I did really want to um, formally thank True uh, and Transform Hawaii Government, the Hawaii Technology Development Corporation, the Hawaii Executive Collaborative, um, HCDC, to really, um, for hosting this event. Um, you know, Paul had talked to me about, about it probably a month or six weeks ago, um, and I, I embraced it immediately. Um, with true, we can help each other be successful, and that's very important. Um, you know, Actions has been in the works to use technology to make government and businesses uh, more efficient uh, and more successful. And that's something that we all need to embrace and help each other uh, be successful. You know, I'm proud of the work that we've done in the, in the state of Hawaii over the past 12 or 18 months. Uh, DCCA uh, is modernizing to leverage technology to provide better uh, and more efficient services. Uh, our unemployment office, with all the challenges that we've had, still applied much technology to be able to improve services and turn uh, turnaround and response time. The Safe Travels program has been the model in the country about ensuring uh, public health and safety. Uh, and I just checked the st statistics uh, this morning. We've brought 4.2 million people who would not have come to Hawaii uh, to the islands uh, in the nine months or so uh, since we implemented the Safe Travels program in a safe and healthy way that did not uh, jeopardize the health and well-being of our community. Uh, you know, HCDC is working with uh, True and many other partners on e-commerce solutions. We're in the middle of upgrading our 50-year-old financial management system in state government. I'm afraid to say that it's even older than our UI system. Um, you know, and we're not only doing it in the Department of Education, the Department of Transportation, and the core government uh, information system. But you know, when I become go became governor, um, we were in the middle of the procurement to upgrade the FMS system, um, and 
we had $40 million uh, authorized and appropriated, and the lowest bid that we got was $180 million. So that one of the first things I had to do was cancel that contract because uh, there was no way that we would be able to implement. We didn't have the money. Uh, it didn't make sense to me. You know, we are in the process of upgrading um, the financial management system. Uh, and I don't know, Kurt, we're saying 17 million now or so. From 180 million uh, five, six years ago, uh, we're down to 17 and counting. Uh, and truly, we see this rapid transformation uh, happening everywhere in state government and in the private sector. And the quicker we embrace it, the more successful Hawaii will be. Uh, so I really wanted to thank you for your partnership and being here. I just want you to know that the state of Hawaii is all in. You know, we are uh, making investments that we need to, we want to be your partners in this transformation. We do know that that is the only way the state of Hawaii and all of our children and our children's children will have a future here in Hawaii if we make it happen. Aloha and mahalo. My Thank you, Governor. Next, I'd like to welcome Mike McCartney, Director of DBED, Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. He's been such an integral partner, along with Hen Higashi, Acting Director of HDC, Hawaii Technology Development Corp., with our closely aligned missions. Director McCartney will share how the states adopted technologies and how they are supporting local businesses in doing the same. Director. Aloha, everyone. And uh, first of all, I want to just thank our DBED team because what we're trying to do at DBED is change ourselves so we can partner with everyone else out there. So we're going through our own 2.0, changing who we are so we can assist and be the best partners in the private sector. So I want to thank Len Higashi and everyone here from the DBED Ohana for making this happen. And Governor, um, you know, I think you're the digital governor. And um, looking back over time, knowing you, um, I think one of the stories he tells is that when he got out of the University of Hawaii and um, graduated from there, um, he got 41 job offers, 40 from firms on the mainland because he was an electrical engineer. And I think the governor's dream is the next generation, the people born today, there'll be 41 job offers from Hawaii that they, they will have to choose from. And so that's why I think we're here, not just for ourselves, but for the common good and the future and the collective interests of Hawaii. So, the Sandbox has been a living example of that, and we have done many things together. And I think when we want to look back, we see that we all got together when we first started, and we were all in this room, and then COVID hit. And as the governor said, um, COVID, it was an unfortunate experience for many people, all of us, but it also was something that forced us to change. It made us have to look at ourselves, look at the world, and look at the rate of change that's happening, just like the people in the past for Hawaii, with all the changes that they had to go through and all the different transformations, this was our turn. And we always knew that closing was gonna be a lot easier than reopening. And that's what we're going through now. And in that reopening, it's not opening to the same, it's opening to something different. And digital solutions have been a key to that for people to adopt, to learn, to understand, and the sandbox is this facilitative catalyst that can bring people together to do that. And that's what DBED wants to do, is be a facilitative catalyst. And I have many of my colleagues on the cabinet here, and I just wanted to acknowledge all of them and what they're doing, because the state's working hard on things like this. Um, I wanted to hold it up. And um, you know, the financial management system, we did the payroll system, we did time in attendance, and it's amazing what everyone is doing and going through. And I want, it started with the governor when we first went into um, the governor's office and he said he wanted to do this and everybody gave him proposals like you said, but he said we have to do it ourselves. So he got together with ETS and we just did e-sign in his office. All the other departments were still using paper, but he said we have to live by example. So that's what we did. And we e-signed in the office and then gave it back in paper. And he said, everyone will adopt. And so um, 
that's what's happening. I think one of the keys to digital conversion is also leadership. And leading by example, I think, is going to be a key for the future. And so you all remember safe travels. And many of you are in this room, like people like Peter Holm, and we, we struggled. We had many meetings. We talked about things. We found solutions. We found mistakes. We changed. We changed. But if you look back, um, it was an amazing feat to get people, technology, and our number one industry together to help start things moving. And I think in the long term, it's going to prove that um, Hawaii will be one of the premier destinations in the world, not only to attract the right people, but also on destination management and looking at that. And safe travels was the gateway and the prototype for us to do that. And then we did a lot of things like remote work, and we, those projects are out there. And you know, movers and shakas, that program has yielded many things that nobody expected. You know, we have instant teams. We have a lot of programs that are working in, in that arena. And this is part of the journey, right? You have to adjust whenever it happens. And I think this is the key, that um, people plus collaboration plus technology equals innovation. People make things happen. We have, people will create a knowledge-based, zero emission, digital economy to create a Hawaii 2.0. But the competitive advantage is us. We're the competitive advantage. The technology is out there. And what Chu helped us to see, it's really us and how we work together. Because the how matters and how we work together will determine what the final result looks like. And if we do it in a, in a bad way, it's not going to work out. People matter in this. And Hawaii has really good values. And then it's communication, it's common understanding, and it's building trust. And that's what true is about. And people working together is always better. And if you think about it, you know, it's about malama, to just take care and to take care of each other. And then it's about aloha, the coordination of your mind and heart, bringing each person to the self for the collective existence with no expectation or obligation in return. And it's about working towards that collective existence of all of us. And so, Paul, I want to just thank you on behalf of the governor and give you something right here that reminds us of how the spirit of how we have to work together. Because back in 1971, Governor Burns had a conference in the year 2000, and what are we going to do for the future? And a very important woman in Hawaii's history stood up, and she talked about aloha. And she said, the world will turn to Hawaii because Hawaii has the key, and that key is aloha. And if we live it and we collaborate with that, we can not only transform ourselves, but we can help the world. So, Paul, I want to give you this key from the governor. You have the key, and we got to work together. And thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you Director McCartney. Next, I'd like to welcome Paul Yonamine, Executive Chairman of Central Pacific Bank and Chair of the True Initiative. Paul has a, headed up IBM in Japan and has a long history and experience in technology, helping countless entities leverage the power of technology to transform organizations. Paul. Thanks, Michelle. Oh. Thank you. Thanks so much, Governor. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a very inspiring talk. I really appreciate that. And, and thank you, Mike, for, you know, for this, uh, this key as well. And I accept this on behalf of the entire uh, true team as well. Thank you. Um, you know, listening to, um, the governor and, and Mike, um, you know, I agree. I mean, we have to focus on collaboration. You know, if we're going, if we're planning to accelerate into the digital economy, um, there's absolutely no question that we all have to collaborate, not just within the private sector, uh, but with the educational institutions, with the nonprofits, and also with government. Um, that's going to be key. And um, you know, we have limitations on the number of resources. Uh, in Hawaii. Uh, we just don't have enough people to go around and trying to implement, you know, the, the best-in-class technologies. So we, as a community, if we come together and share, do a lot of that mind share, we could get it done. Uh, but in the process, we make sure that that knowledge stays in Hawaii, that we're not always running out to the mainland and elsewhere and bringing in new resources. 
and just using their knowledge and seeing them all disappear after the project's completed. Uh, so resources, a very important element for you know, future collaboration. Uh, a second area, I, I believe, you know, the, the largest uh, buyer of technology in the state of Hawaii is the state. And if we can collaborate with the state, we create such a big presence, a great target for the, you know, for the many IT vendors of the world. They're gonna get, they, we're gonna get their attention. And, and, and I'm gonna touch on that a little bit later, but we, we've already seen companies like AWS and, and Adobe and Microsoft come in here and provide free uh, seminars and boot camps uh, because they see the potential here. Uh, that's another area of, of potential uh, collaboration. Uh, a third area is this facility. Uh, you know, we have uh, 11 private tenants in here now, you know, CPB as well. Um, and we have a lot of other companies that come in here and use this facility. Uh, this wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the leadership of HTDC, DBED, the state government, and really building out this facility. So once again, just many things that we can benefit from collaboration. And finally, uh, later on, Eddie and Peter may touch on it, but there are a lot of uh, good best practices and references, uh, even from the public sector and as well as the private sector. And we, we ought to share a lot of that information together. It can really make the implementation process a lot more efficient, get, us, get our people more confident that things can get done. So, you know, collaboration is key. Now, you know, this isn't an advertisement for, you know, CPB, but I want to talk to you a little bit about my experience since I joined uh, Central Pacific Bank a little over two years ago, and I came back to Hawaii. When I first joined the bank, uh, we were a Lotus Notes user, okay? And yes, it's, it's still around, right? Um, our mobile, our online application was a 2.1 uh, rating on a scale of one to five by Apple and Android. Um, our ATM fleet was over 10 years old, uh, and we were, we were very much mired in a, in a legacy uh, environment in terms of hardware and software. You know, we were really fortunate, uh, worked with the CPB team, with Catherine No, who's here today as well, and we embarked on a digital journey, and we were really fortunate that we did that before the pandemic, right? And, uh, and today, um, you know, a lot of great things around that. Um, our online mobile application is rated 4.8. Um, you know, we have a state-of-the-art communication platform that allowed us to just pivot immediately and work remotely and also securely, um, you know, during the entire pandemic. Um, we are a, you know, we redid all of our ATM footprint. I think we have best-in-class ATMs today, and, and, uh, and we're a very active cloud user today. We moved most of our old legacy systems to the cloud. And everything gets done cheaper and a lot easier uh, today, right? Uh, but now we're on to some new things. We're trying to take a hard look at uh, AI, uh, especially to power our call centers. We're using robotics process automation to uh, convert and automate a lot of the manual processes. Things that used to take like hours gets done in seconds today. But, you know, don't worry about our employees. We didn't make them redundant. What we're doing is we're retraining them and we're, we're helping them to be able to provide more value to the organization. And what we're gonna do for that is we're gonna pay them more. And that's the model, right? So, you know, we're pretty proud about what we accomplished at CPB. I think today we're, not, we're no longer a laggard in technology usage. Um, you know, we're, we're right up there with the large banks in Asia and the mainland. I mean, Wells Fargo and Bank of America, they don't, they don't have a better mobile app than we do. And, and I think all the other financial institutions in Hawaii are following suit. And, and, you know, a lot of that can be achieved today because everything is just simply over the Internet. It's, it's software as a service. You just have to have the will to use it, experiment it, you know, test and learn. Um, you know, so we went out and we, we went to a lot of our customers and we told them our story about how we uh, transform our technology and how we could be a better bank, you know, to a lot of our customers. 
And, but what we found out in the process is that we weren't the only late adopter. There are many organizations. There's, of course, some exceptions in Hawaii that, that use technology really well. But the vast majority were also late adopters of technology. And I just felt that we were really missing out on an opportunity. Uh, not just to become more efficient. If you recall, right before the pandemic, our unemployment rate was what, like around 2.4%. We just didn't have enough people. And yet, um, you know, I, I read the Alice report. You know, Peter Ho and Bank of Hawaii were very instrumental in funding that for the uh, Aloha United Way. And it was a, you know, it was a very revealing report that, you know, we had so much high employment and yet half of our workforce can't make ends meet. You know, but it was around that time that I had the opportunity of looking at an article uh, that indicated that even here in Hawaii, tech-enabled workers make 50% more in compensation than the non-tech-enabled worker, 50%. And we're not talking about programmers and coders, we're talking about administrative assistants, people who work in purchasing and logistics and sales or whatnot, but people who know how to use technology create more value and get paid better. So we thought, you know, what a, what a great opportunity to tech enable more workers in Hawaii to help them make ends meet. And it was just, you know, it was pure coincidence. Um, Stanford Carr calls me up one day and says, you know, we built this great facility in Kaka'ako uh, called the Entrepreneur Sandbox. Can you come and take a look? And make a long story short, I got together with Stanford, got together with Len Higashi of HDDC, and we said, this is it. This is where we have to make the test and learning center and get people to use more technology here. We collaborate, you know, public sector, private sector, educational institutions, nonprofits. We all come together and we try and figure it out here. Um, and so the first first individuals I went to, as well as Len, was the governor, and this was back in August of 2019, and Mike, and we explained this uh, vision, this process, and uh, immediately got commitment from the governor and Mike, and that made us feel really confident, because that can provide us again with that critical mass, the economies of scale, that's going to attract a lot of uh, best-in-class IT companies. So, so we went ahead, I, I reached out to Dwayne Carisu with the Hawaii Executive Collaborative, asked him to really support this, to get a lot of the companies to back this. He did that. Went to Christine Sakuda, who really helped us out through Transform Hawaii Government. Uh, and then we were very fortunate to, uh, uh, to hook in Michelle Chung, who is now our Executive Director. She used to head up technology for locations, the real estate company. Uh, extremely well-versed uh, technologist, and uh, I somewhat humbly took on the role of being chair of the True Initiative and uh, asked Peter Dames of Servco with a lot of support from Mark Fukunaga to come in as vice chair. And that's how we put this initiative together. We named it True for Technology Readiness User Evaluation. It was a name that DBED had, and we thought it'd be really appropriate. Today we have 25 or so organizations involved. Uh, many of them are tenants. Naturally, Central Pacific Bank, you see the big whales back there. Surfco Pacific is in there. Uh, Island Holdings, Hawaiian Airlines, uh, Japan Airlines, Data House, Hawaiian Telecom, First Hawaiian Bank. Um, you know, many of them are tenants or members in, in True. Um, you know, naturally, since COVID hit, it's been very challenging for us to convene here. But thanks to Michelle and the team, we've had 25 excellent events, virtual events. Um, now, you know, most of my time before joining CPB was in technology, and I could assure you that the content was first class. Please take, take a moment to check out the, you know, a lot of those virtual events. They're offered on video. Um, and you know, since we did that, uh, sure enough, the Googles, the AWSs, the Adobe's, they're all interested. And, and we have so many offers right now from many software vendors to provide uh, free, at no charge, uh, events here to help educate our people. So, you know, things are really coming together. You know, I, I, um, I came to Hawaii a little over two years ago 
because this is a community of no other. Uh, you know, this is a place where um, private public sector, universities, educational institutions, nonprofits, I, I think we collaborate and work better than, than any other community in the world. And, I, and I've worked in many places in my career. And, uh, and yet, you know, as I touched on earlier, we have a lot of people really having a tough time making ends meet. Technology alone is not going to solve everything, but this, is, this could make a dent, you know. Um, the economy is roaring back, and it's a matter of time. I mean, restaurants and hotels are already having a tough time getting workers. It's going to get even harder, right? And uh, we have to leverage technology uh, for that. Um, you know, probably once the Japanese return, shortly after the Olympics, knock on wood, uh, we're going to hear a lot about over-tourism. We need to use technology to redefine tourism. You know, we should define what kind of tourists we want to come to Hawaii. Uh, more is not better. Quality is better. Tourists who spend more money is better. Tourists who appreciate our culture is better. And we could do that with technology today. So, you know, in closing, I, I really appreciate all of you joining us today. This is not about me, it's not about CPB, or it's not about any of us, it's really about the community. And, it, and, it, and we're gonna make a difference in really accelerating uh, our effort into the digital economy if we all work together. And so I really ask all of you to join us. And uh, you know, join us to accelerate your digital journey. Uh, if you're already an expert at it, great. Come here and help us, right? So uh, thank you very much for your attention today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Paul. Next, I'd like to welcome Eddie Antai, president of Data House, local consulting firm that's been delivering world-class solutions to customers for over 40 years. Eddie and Data House have been committed to nurturing and hiring local talent, and has put Hawaii on the map globally for exporting technology solutions. Eddie. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, before I get into my formal speech, I just want a uh, little factoid. Uh, you mentioned Lotus Notes. At one point, when Lotus Notes just came out, Data House was one of the world was the largest uh, distributors of that implementers in the world. So my apologies, Governor, because I know there's a lot of Lotus Notes still in the state. And um, could I say we implement what sticks, right? And sorry about that at UI too. <laughs> Uh, but hello, everyone, and just uh, very, very pleased that all of you folks are here today and join us in this uh, campaign to digitally transform our community. Um, like Paul, I too share this passion of rising the tide for all our local businesses and government agencies that will help Hawaii not only stay relevant in today's times, but really thrive in what we're seeing is this digitally driven global marketplace. We talked about that before. Uh, we all know that Hawaii is a very special place in this world beyond just our beautiful natural resources, uh, but also in our people, our culture, and as Mike referenced, our lost spirit, which really connects us all together, right? And that's why we're all here today. So what does this all have to do with this innovation framework that I was asked to talk about? Well, it has everything to do about who we are as a community, because our belief is in the power of connecting assets in a community, which is personally, what we experienced over the last 46 years being in business. And we believe it so much that we developed this framework that we branded as Community Source Innovation. I won't get into all the details of how that model works today, but what I will share is why we created it, and more importantly, how it can help many of your businesses, departments, agencies, leverage technology, and truly be innovative yourselves. But I'll be honest with you, there's no magic wand uh, there's no silver bullet to being innovative. It's just connecting ideas and assets, collaborating together, and coming up with solutions that will put, action, put, put into action in an iterative and agile way. Whether it be solving a business or community problem, developing new products or service offerings, or even coming up with whole new business models altogether. You know, human innovation has been happening since the beginning of time, really. It's just that now, it's just happening so fast. So you can think about this framework being similar to a fit, fitness, physical fitness program, yeah? Everyone knows that staying physically fit is good for you. Uh, we know generally some basic exercises. But you can better your chances of staying fit if you put, a, put together a fitness program. So our innovation framework is like a fitness program, except the one goal 
is to keep you creatively fit. So why do we create this model? Well, it starts with first understanding who we are as a family of companies. For those who aren't familiar with Data House, we're the founding company of several sister companies, all here in Hawaii, Team Praxis, Ikahi Health Systems, Data House Asia, Sagely, and more recently, Health Persona, with EK Hawaii being our parent and holding company. Our tagline and model is enriching lives in Hawaii by sparking innovation. And collectively, we share a vision of accomplishing our mission by innovating locally to scale globally. And I'm proud to say that we've been doing this for several decades now, which has helped us to grow globally in the US continent as well as in the Asia markets, all while boosting our local economy and creating high value jobs. And that's why we're all in with True and why we ask you to. But being in the technology business, we're kind of forced to continually innovate and reinvent ourselves, really out of survival. So what we learned and practiced over the 46 years, we decided to put into a playbook that we called Ideas to Impact, and also developed a one-page innovation canvas that enables anyone to create innovation in their own organizations. But got to admit, there's a spoiler alert here. All the stuff in this playbook, they're not original ideas. Um, in fact, most of it is a compilation of other people's ideas, methodologies, approaches. Some of them you're probably familiar with, like Lean Canvas, uh, design thinking, strategic doing. But the value in the playbook is really in how we compiled it all together, such that it maximizes your chances for creating value in your own business. Kind of like innovation made easy. So we end up summarizing into just seven simple steps and even suggest a number of technology tools and methodologies that you can use along your own innovation journey. Lastly, as Paul mentioned, innovation doesn't happen in a silo. Uh, best solutions are those that are when there's collaboration and sharing. And that's why we decided we needed to share this with True and with all of you in the community so that you can actually use it suggest changes and it can evolve and just get better. It's kind of like an innovation, open source innovation framework, if you will. And one, one of the more recent outcomes of, this, of using this framework was a Community Innovation Mentorship Program, or CIMP. This was a great use case of how the model and framework helped to develop this program and not only create real value to all the stakeholders involved, but we were actually able to prove that it could scale. But this framework and this tool is just one of many resources that True has to offer to the community. And our hope, again, is that it can act as a catalyst to truly digitally transform our businesses and our community. So again, on behalf of the True Steering Committee, we mahalo all of you folks for being here. But more importantly, we really mahalo you for jumping in and participating. Aloha. Next, please welcome Peter Dames, Executive Vice President of Servco, Hawaii's leader in automotive products and services, and much more. Peter shared how they've extended innovation to different departments through Servco Labs, and he'll share why now is the time to act. Peter. Good morning. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, I'm going to stay on script because Michelle only gave me three and a half minutes. She gave Paul four minutes, and you know how far off he was. So, <laughs> uh, we got involved in True before it was True. It was basically, I remember sitting down with you, Paul, in your office and talking about the concept back in early 2019. I told Paul, we'd only join if we actually did things. Real projects with real companies. We weren't interested in joining another group that was good at talking. For Servco, technology, community and innovation have been a key part of the company's culture. It's what we do best. You don't survive 102 years by doing things the same way. Continuous innovation is in our blood and as we grow and lead here in Hawaii, we wanted to help. So joining Paul, CPB and the other founding companies was a no-brainer. As technology gets more complex and constantly changing, we wanted to help create a way to make, e make it easier to implement into more businesses here in Hawaii. For me, True is about having a place or a forum where we can share our learnings with others, with companies, with government, with education, to help everyone gain a higher comfort level with technology in Hawaii. 
One of the projects we've been working on together with Mayor Blangiardi's team is creating a new way for auto dealers to register vehicles electronically. Doing this will reduce wait times at the DMV for everyone while making the state, the city, and auto dealers more efficient. It's an application Servgo assisted in creating under the leadership and direction of Mark Wong, the city's CIO. We kicked the project off about 18 months ago, fought through COVID, building this virtually, and it's almost done. And when the pilot's completed, we're gonna give the application to all the HADA dealers in the state for free. It was a great public-private partnership, and this is what TRUE is all about. With TRUE, it's not all about giving, it's also about taking. We're learning from CPB on their efforts around cybersecurity, robotic, process automation, and AI. This is a safe space to learn from and help each other out with the latest technologies. Having our digital team upstairs at the Sandbox and interacting with other companies as well as entrepreneurs here on the first floor has opened up our thinking. It's a place where things just happen with an awesome vibe thanks to DBET and HTDC. We must continue to build out this area and make it Hawaii's digital tech hub. Now, you can see there's a big hole over here in the wall between the beams. And according to Stanford Carr, there's a reason why it's, why it's there. And it's, it's, it's kind of appropriate we're having this. As I was driving in this morning, I was listening to one of the Stanford Hoover Institute's podcasts, and it was the speechwriter for Ronald Reagan back in 1989. So, Mr. Governor, Mr. Stanford Carr, Tear down that wall. Let's build this whole place out. In 2019, Surfco built a state-of-the-art customer data platform using technology from a small startup company in Seattle called Imperity. We learned a ton, and through True, showcased that technology throughout Hawaii. Last year, First Hawaiian Bank decided to implement this technology and we work with Chris Dodds and his team to make it happen. That's another great example of what True is all about. With True, we're, help, we're here to help each other out, and we can't do this alone. In Hawaii, we must work together as one to build a successful digital future. This is why you should get involved now. Enough talk, let's roll up our sleeves, have fun, and most importantly, get shit done. <laughs> Thank you for coming out today, and I'd like to hand it back to Michelle to finish us up. Thank you, Peter, and thank you to all of our speakers. Um, you've given us all a reason to embrace the digital economy, and True, HDC, THG, Data House, and a lot of organizations that are involved um, have given us the means to do so. The call to action is simple. Visit True's website at www.hec.org slash true. Read through the use cases and identify one that aligns with a need that you have in your organization. If you're already doing something great, as my speakers have mentioned, we'd love you to share that so we can support other organizations here in Hawaii. And lastly, if you'd like to get involved and you aren't sure how, please connect with me and we'll get you involved. In addition to connecting with me, you can also connect with one of our true committee members. I'm so fortunate and grateful to have a committee that's committed and giving of their time and resources to helping Hawaii's organizations thrive. And I want to take a moment to thank those who have been leaning in to true, especially during this very challenging year. I'd like to highlight another way that you can get involved. Here are some upcoming events that you and your team can join. As Paul mentioned, we're getting a lot of support from the larger tech companies. And whether it's to learn what's possible, learn how to do something specific, get free advice, or to get to know others who are on similar paths, we'd love if you could join us. Go to the website to sign up, and we'll also see a email after this event where you can get more information on upcoming events. And lastly, we value your input. Please take a moment to fill out the post-event survey with this QR code. You can also 
highlight which solutions are most valuable to you. If you're not able to get the QR code, don't worry about that. We'll send that in the post-event email as well. And with that, I would like to thank our virtual audience for joining us today. I look forward to collaborating with you.